What's going on YouTube? Alright, so today's gonna be a little bit different of a day. So recently I've been looking on the news, I've been seeing a lot about batteries blowing up, a misuse of all these batteries. I wanna explain well, what my theory behind these batteries explosions are. Because I don't feel like we're getting the whole story and it's giving us all the bad rap for everybody that uses mods. It's giving everybody else more of a reason to tell them, oh, vaping is bad, we should regulate it, we should not allow this, we should ban these in places. No, that's, that's terrible. The reason why this happens, it's poor education. If they don't understand battery safety, I went over this in our last video, and I, I'm gonna do a better job this time and explain the whole process of what happens and how these could possibly happen, what shorts go through, what batteries that were used. We'll start with the first one, that kid in, what was it, California that blew himself up when he was using a 4.9 mod and a Atlantis. Now the Atlantis has a spring-loaded 510 connector inside of it. Big no-no when you're using a straight voltage mod because you're not going to get direct contact to the battery. You're going to short the battery out, it's going to hit that piece of metal, and it's not going to make the full contact. It's going to short the battery out, it's going to heat, it's going to vent onto itself. Yeah, it'll fire here and there, but the fact, like when I was reading the article, it said he was hitting it and he heard a hum. Then he, as he was pulling it out of his mouth, it exploded. Now here's my thoughts on this. Anybody that's vented a battery, anybody that's had their mod get hot on them, anything that's ever happened to them, you know that battery is going to get extremely hot before it explodes. So everybody knows that when you short out a battery, when it gets shorted, something happens, it's going to start venting or it's going to start heating up. Now when that happens, that means the battery just connected to itself and nowhere to go. All the energy is getting stored and cycled into the cell. Just going nowhere and just heating up really fast. Moving really fast to the point your battery is going to heat up. That energy moving within the battery, it's going to keep moving. It's going to heat your batteries up to, I don't know, 200 plus degrees before it'll even explode, before it'll start popping any type of, any type of uh, battery acid on top of anything. So this guy is modding. The way he has said it exploded doesn't make any sense to me. None at all. I mean, there's, there had to have been so much pressure built up inside that battery and had it been going off for a good minute, it wouldn't have happened immediately. He would have noticed it by a couple of hits that his mod's heating up tremendously. And he would notice this, not to fucking hit it, not to hit it again. I mean... It's common sense. That's the biggest that's the biggest issue is common sense here. I mean, if you're holding it and it gets to the point where you can't even hold it anymore, it's too hot to hold it, why would you hit it again? Why would you put it towards your mouth? You should probably take the battery out of there and see what's going on. That's gonna be the issue. And it wouldn't happen instantly. It wouldn't be him hitting it, pull his hand out, and then it exploded. That it doesn't work that way. That's not how these batteries function. Even if it was a trust fire battery, because it looked it looked in the video when I saw the scraps, it looked like a little trust fire battery. Now even though the battery shorted out it still would have vented first. Battery acid would have sprayed somewhere and then it would have exploded. It wouldn't have just gone straight from nothing to explosion. That's that's not right. I mean, even unstable batteries are not going to do that. Even using an ICR battery, it's still not going to do that. I mean, it'll you'll get a good pop, but it wouldn't be to the point to where it exploded like that. So much pressure had to be built up inside that battery for it to explode. And this bugs me because all of us here, me, myself, and a lot of other people are trying to advocate vape safety, getting good vapeware, using them properly, the right ways to do it, the ways to keep yourself safe and to get a better wrap for ourselves. I mean, yes, we're using it a little bit differently. It's unregulated mods, like the mechanical mods, straight pipe mods with the battery attached to it. It's using the 4.9 mod with direct battery, direct contact to the battery, like the Apollo is now, like the Hades Mini, like the Steam Gray with the hybrid cap. Like, all these mods are switching to this way, and it's been working fine. There's been no issues for it, and then all out of nowhere, this battery blows up. And now it's making the rest of us look bad. And now there's a huge discussion on what's going on with this. What could possibly happen? I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about the guy. If it's his first mod, he didn't know what he's doing. Okay, that's terrible. But I, I put it on the vape shop. At that point, you need to be able to educate your customers on battery safety. It should be a necessity everywhere you go because these things are dangerous. They can be very dangerous if they're not used properly. And in his case, it was not used properly. I mean, it's just, it just doesn't make any sense to me that it just exploded like that. And then we'll go on to the second issue. The man in Texas who had his leg burnt because he had a 18500 battery in his pocket and it, and it vented out and, expl and it exploded on his lap. I mean, that makes more sense. Yeah, the battery acid flew everywhere, it got really hot, it burnt his leg. That's what would have happened. That's what would have happened to that, that man's hand if he would have held onto the battery any longer. So that, the whole situation there doesn't make any sense. And those little cuts in his hand from the explosion, if it was as, if it was as bad as that explosion was where the... Atlanta's take was hanging out of the ceiling a lot more than just a few cuts on his hand would have been there. I don't think the whole story is not there. I don't believe the whole story is there. I mean, I'm not sure if anybody else knows more about it. Please send me the link so I can read up on it more, get more information on it. I mean, I'm, I'm in the dark on this one, sort of. But the other one with Man in Texas with his leg blew off. Everybody knows you don't carry loose batteries in your pocket. If you have change, keys, anything in there that can short the battery out, that's going to happen to anybody. 
If you're gonna put batteries in your pocket, put them in like a little case. I mean, you can go to the dollar store and get these little plastic cases. They're about that big by that big for like 99 cents. And you can just go ahead and put your batteries inside that to hold them safely. It's, it's not hard, it's common sense, guys. It's common sense. And I guess it's an uncommon, I guess that common sense is an uncommon virtue. That's just, that's my rant on this. I mean, and the fact that this guy is suing the vape shop because the battery malfunctioning on him, because of his use, again, back to the vape shops. You need to educate your customers on proper battery control. You need to let them know what is the right way to use a battery, what not to do with the batteries, how to store them, how to keep them from blowing up on you. I mean, it's not really hard to do, but it is really easy to get them to vent on you. And it's simple things. If any metal touches that battery, any bare metal touches any part of that bare battery, it's gonna, it's gonna spark. It's gonna have a ground. If it has some type of ground, it has some type of ignite on the top part, it's gonna spark the battery, it's gonna start venting. All the energy is gonna be running through it, then it's gonna explode. This is, this is common knowledge, it should be common knowledge by now for anybody that vapes. I mean, it just, it's things like that that just make all of us look bad. And it really, it just gets me so mad when I think about this stuff. I mean, I, I was gonna post this video up on Friday, but I needed the weekend to cool down. After I saw all these, I was heated. I was livid. I could not, I could not hold myself. I had, to, I had to take a few days off. That's why the video didn't get posted last week because I had to take a few days just to, to calm myself before I got onto this video, before I went and talked about this because this needs to be addressed. This needs to be addressed, it needs to be vocalized and everybody needs, everybody needs to know about this. Like this guy suing this vape shop doesn't make any sense to me. He's suing a vape shop for batteries that they bought from a secondary supplier or third party supplier but he's, getting, he's going to the vape shops. The only fault they have is not educating him well enough on battery safety. And like I said, that should be number one priority when anybody buys a mod for the first time. Even if it's not for the first time, anybody that's had a mod, then they should know better. Battery safety. It's posted up on all of these blogs. It's posted up on all of these forums. It's posted up on Facebook, everywhere. Everywhere that's always talked about battery safety because it's a huge problem. Everybody's wondering, is this battery safe to vape? Is this battery safe to vape? Looking at it, you're just learning about them. Over time, you're going to realize that, okay, this is what you can and cannot do with these batteries. This is what these batteries can and cannot handle. You have to make sure you hold all of that. So enough of my rant there. So today, I figured I'd put on the hobo, and this thing, this hobo is, is nice. I really do enjoy this hobo. I mean, I got it the other day, I mean, just built it up. I just did a 6 wrap or a 5 wrap 26 gauge. The thing I love about this hobo the best, though, is that drip wall that doesn't leak. It's amazing because I can just sit here and hold my mod down and just let it go to work. Just sit there and hold it and hold it and hold it even longer. I mean, I can hold it for a good amount of time. I can talk to you this whole entire time without having to worry about my mod burning out or burning the cotton because I'm sitting here holding it still in the cotton and it's still wet. I just, I filled this thing up before I just baked on here. Filled it up before I started the video. And I'm still, I'm still going. It's still going. It's still wet. It's still not even... Not even bone dry, I've been holding it there for a solid, I don't know, 5, 6, 10, 10, I don't know how long I was holding it, but it was a long time, a lot longer than me pulled for any drag. The mod's still wet, I can still put this cap on here and I feel confident enough to take a hit without getting a drag in. Still no dry yet. And the best part, the thing I love about this the most though is I can just grab my bottle, just fill her up. Just get a nice good layer in there. Heat it up a couple times to wake that juice into the bottom, get into the juice well right there. Put that top cap back on there and just go and vape. I mean, the airflow on this thing is amazing too. It's got the two side airflows on this side and this side, but it's also got the top airflow on this removable cap right here. So if you look at this cap right here, you'll see it's got two airflows on the top as well. Now that there is wonderful to keep your coils cool. Gives you a bit of a suction effect so you can just pull in more vapor a lot quicker. You don't have to pull as hard. You can get a good amount of cloud from it as well. But the flavor is not muted. Everything is there still. So I'm going to put this back on. Alright. Just up on there and give it a hit. Potential to blow massive clouds. There's a lot of potential with this thing. I've not done much with it yet. I'm not played around with it as much. It's one of the few RDAs I just grabbed. I mean, I have plenty of other ones I got to do reviews on. I just got to look at them, get wait till they come in, just seeing how they vape. But this one right here, I mean, I just I've only started using this thing recently. I mean, I've had it sitting there, haven't touched it. 
for a while. It's been sitting there, just decided today I'm going to pull it out. And so far I'm enjoying it. Let's see what kind of clouds we can get off this thing. That's at the two long drags I've taken on this thing. Some pretty long, lungful drags I'm taking off of this stuff. And I'm still confident I can take another four or five, six more off of this thing without even drying, without it drying out on me. That's one thing I really like to do because, I, like I said, I said before, I hate dripping all the time. I hate dripping all the time, but I don't like RBAs as much. My RBA of choice is the Orchid. I tried the Limo. It was nice. I had the rushing. I enjoyed that pretty well, but the Orchid is just... Once you figure out the wicking of that thing and how to build it properly, the Orchid is wonderful. My favorite RBA of all time. I'm loving the cloud production, I'm loving the flavor. Everything about it so far has been pretty nice. I like the design on it. I like a little hobo in the front. A little H with a little hobo stick. You gotta enjoy that. Oh yeah. If you've a lot of you been watching my videos, you'll notice that I shaved my beard about a month, month and some change back. Decided to grow it back out, and I figured what more appropriate RDA to put out when I'm starting to look like a hobo than the hobo RDA. Uh, so like I noticed it's like these cider flows. When I first got this thing and built it up, I, like, I put a smaller build on there, did the fiber out 26 gauge, something simple. Something that I thought these air holes can control wouldn't be too hot, but those top airflow make a huge difference to all of this. I didn't think it would make that big of a difference, but it really does. I was not expecting that. I'm pleasantly surprised with the Hobo RDA. I mean, it's been out for a while. I've had it for a while. I just never played with it and was never really interested in it. I mean, it looked nice. And then picked it up, decided to throw a build on there, show you guys today, and I mean, I'm enjoying it. I am very much enjoying this RDA. I'm just wondering when it's going to go dry because I've been hitting this thing this whole time and I've not gotten it dry yet. It's enjoyable. There it was. There's the dry hit. <coughs> it wasn't as rough as I thought it was going to be, but it was pretty bad. Dry hits are never enjoyable. Never, never, never enjoyable. Well, thank you for following along with me on my rant today. I had to get that off my chest. I wanted to make sure I get my voice and opinion known. I mean, that's how I feel about it, and as the company, it's gear spec, we feel about it as well. We want to give you quality products. We want to give you safe batteries, you want to give everything out there so you just you're not gonna run into this issue where it's gonna blow up on you. I mean, it's a scary it's a scary thought to know that your mod can explode in your hands and it's been thought, it's been heard of and it's been talked about and it's happened before but recently it's been coming to light because now vapes are getting more of attention from the media. Now everybody's knowing about them, everybody's wanting them, everybody's switching to them. It's becoming it's becoming huge. I mean when I started vaping four years ago, four years and change ago, I mean I did not expect it for it to get this big. I mean, I've been, like I said, I've been vaping for quite a bit of time. I jumped in on it, started using those Ego batteries, those E6s for a while. Jumped to mods a few years back and it's not gone back to the Ego batteries. I mean, I use them here and there. Now that they got better tanks, they got like the Atlantis and they got this tank hanger sub of them and the Arctic tank and all these tanks out there that can, that, that sub, all the sub of them tanks out there, the next gen tanks, that you can do everything you can do off a of dripper. You just don't have to worry about the, the benefit or you don't have to worry about building the mod. Now, personally, I enjoy building. It's one of my favorite things to do. It relaxes me. It's calming for myself. It's something that I take pride in what I do. I mean, I do some really nice builds and I keep them really simple. I don't do these extravagant builds. I've done them before. They work fine, but the work you put into them to make these extravagant builds to the vape production that you get afterwards, it's some of them make a difference. Some of them are really nice, but a lot of them, they're just, they're just builds. They just look nice. They're pretty. They're aesthetic. I mean, something that you can see going out, I mean, they're... they're they're functional, but they're not to the point where I like them. They're, I just like simple. Simple is the easiest way to go for me. Simple is the best way to go for me. And that's just the way I vape. Now, there is no wrong way to vape, but there is definitely also a wrong way to vape. 
I mean, if you don't take battery safety into consideration, then you are going to blow yourself up. And it is a common thing that's coming up lately. And I just wish that it was more vocal, that people would understand battery safety, that I hope that this happening doesn't deter our movement, doesn't stop our movement forward and what we've done for the vaping community to keep this moving forward, to stop this. Like I said, our end goal for all this, the whole reason why this whole started is to quit cigarettes. That's the whole thing you want to do. Just stay off the analogs. Don't go back to them. It's to help you live a healthier, better life. And that's the point of vaping. And I think people are starting to step away from that. I mean, all these crazy devices are coming out. All these high-powered box mods, all these different mods coming out. It's all coming. It's becoming more of a fashion thing. It's becoming more of a... Yeah, mainly just a fashion thing. People like want it because it's this name, or they want it because it's a certain type, or it's a certain brand. I mean, yeah, they do great things. Some of these brands work really well. But at the end of the day, if you can vape, if you can get your vapor out of it, you can stop that, you can curb that appetite, that curb that craving for that cigarette. Just stop all of that. That's that's what it's really all about. That's what vaping is all about. I mean, people take it to the next levels. So you have the juice junkies, that fucking. The flavor, the people that want the best flavor, then you got the cloud chasers like myself. I admit I'm a bit of a cloud chaser. I like to blow big clouds all the time, and that's what pulled me into mods. That's what pulled me to go. That's what grabbed me from the analog e the 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 likes and the the blue cigarettes and the little ego batteries with the regular tanks. That's what pulled me away from those was the fact that I can pull bigger clouds off those mods, and I enjoy it. I mean, it's something I like to do. It's fun for me. It's a good hobby of mine, and that's what it is. It's, at this point, it's a hobby. Do I plan on stopping this? No, but if I was truly adamant about quitting smoking, I would not switch to mods. I mean, initially to get me off, then I would start breaking myself down to where the point where I don't even need a vape anymore. But I enjoy it. Like the juice I'm using now is a three milligram of nicotine. There's hardly anything in there. I still need a nicotine in my body because I was a can a day and two packs a day dipper and smoker. I mean, I was, I was bad. I mean, I'll be, I'll be on deployment and I'll just vape all. I'll be on deployment and didn't have my vape. I would just smoke all day or have a can of dip in my mouth at all times. It was it was bad. It was an addiction. It was terrible and it was something very hard for me to get rid of. But then these definitely did help me. So it's a testament of vaping that it I you can help you quit smoking. It can help you stop. Granted like they everybody's worried about more kids getting pulled into the scene because it's, it's becoming popular. It's becoming the thing to do. It's becoming the fad. And let it become a fad for them. Let them start doing it and then stop after a while. That's that's great. That's wonderful because if they just do it get the rebellion of smoking out of their way because kids are kids they're gonna if they want it they're gonna get it that's what my parents told me as I was growing up if you really want it you're gonna get it if you really want to smoke cigarettes you're gonna get cigarettes if you really want to use a vape you're gonna use a vape so I advocate I mean, let them let them use them I'd much rather see kids nowadays using a vaporizer instead of smoking cigarettes I'd rather than like not the fact that just because I work in the community doesn't mean I'm more adamant, more adamant about having them smoke no I would rather have them do nothing personally. I'd rather have nothing at all. Never get started on the habit at all. Never have that addiction brought into their body because it's tough. People that didn't know nicotine is more addictive than heroin. It's more addictive than crack. Once it's in your body, it becomes part of your body. You need it. It's hard to function. You can quit. You can get rid of it. You can change your body. You can change your lifestyle. This is just a tool to help you stop. To get rid of that oral habit. To always put something in your mouth to smoking. To lower the amount of toxins and carcinogens in your body that you're going to have. And now everybody says vaping is completely benign, but I don't, I don't agree with that. Any inhalant is, can't be good for your body. If it's not meant to go into your body, it can't be healthy for you. That's the way I look at it. But this is definitely the lesser of two evils. This is definitely something that's going to help you stop smoking, or at least cut down the habit to where you don't want to smoke anymore. Because I'm now at the point where even if I smell a cigarette, I get nauseous. If, I, if I'm around them, I get sick. I can smell a smoker from a mile away now. It is, it is terrible. I can't even be around them. I mean, it's something that I've had to deal with, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people out there have had to go through the same problem, and I mean, that's, that's the whole point. We want to stop. We want to quit. We want to go to something different. We want to go to something better. So, it's my second rant for the day. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate the time you took to sit here and listen to me talk. I do pay attention to all my subscribers. I thank all my subscribers again. They keep climbing steadily getting reviews in there steadily, I'm glad the word is getting out, and I want to use this as a platform just to help people quit, to help get the word out that we're not some type of new big tobacco organization, we're not some type of new way to make money, we're not trying to build a new empire on these e-cigs, I mean, the, the whole point of this is to stop smoking, 
I mean, if you can help you quit smoking, then why stop? I mean, if you use the fuse, the patch, and it didn't work, try vaping. Or if you use the patch of the gum, it is working, then get on you. I mean, do whatever you have to do to stop. But the end, the end game is we have to quit, and it has to be done. It has to stop. I mean, there's those avid tobacco smokers out there that smoke all the time. They feel like they're never gonna quit. Just give it a shot. Give it a chance. You gotta find a good shop that'll run you through the ropes, that'll teach you what it means to vape, that'll show you how to do things, that'll set you up with your flavor palette because there's many different ways to vape. There's many different ways to find that taste that you like. There's all kinds of juices out there nowadays that you can find the flavor that you like, that you can enjoy on a regular, that you can vape all the time, that's gonna be pleasant for you, or find the juice that just is good enough to curb the appetites where you know you don't want a cigarette anymore. You can just hit that vape a couple more times and then you're good. I mean, that's what it's all about. That's all it's about. Thank you for watching this video. If you like these videos, make sure to like and subscribe. We'll be putting up video, videos up weekly. At least one video up a week. If we don't, we'll double it up on the next week like we did this time. And if you do like our videos, make sure to follow our links. We'll have links right here in the corner for our other two videos, here and here. And if you like to check out our website, it's www.gearspec.com. That's www.gearspec.com. Thanks for watching.